Hello everyone, I am so glad that we could meet again before the year ends. I wanted to end this year with you while sharing what I have been up to lately. But I am not here to just chit chat this time, we will actually do something. Yeah, I have been waiting for this moment for so long. I wanted to reveal my main tools for illustrative text charting in Blender. This year was especially meaningful for me. I worked hard to overcome some fatal weakness of my previous workflow of illustrative 3D scenes. In this video, I will demonstrate how I texture my scenes with custom brushes I made for Blender using this certain scene. I will also talk about what was my weakness and what helped me to overcome it. As you can see, these are my first set of texture brushes for Blender. You can get them from Gumroot with a tiny price. I appreciate anyone buying that. And it will also help me to frequently come over YouTube to share my stuffs with you. But I also prepared a free brush set which anyone can collect and jump into painting in 3D. The only difference is that they don't have the dual texture brushes for the time being. Anyway, this tutorial is targeted anyone trying illustrative texturing in Blender. I will start by showing how to bring the custom brushes inside Blender. We will append them directly. You can append things manually this way or just hit Shift plus F1. Then you can navigate to the file containing the brushes. Select the brushes and append them. You can probably append everything blindly by selecting every brushes with hotkey A. So here you go. So many more brushes for Blender. And they have the potential to rival most brushes from any 2D softwares for painting. Also, save your startup file if you don't want to go through this every time. Before we get into the real project, let me to demonstrate how those brushes behaves. This one was a dual texture brush I usually use as a pastel color. Difference of dual texture brushes with regular brushes is straightforward. They got these kinds of bristle look. I will talk about the brushes in more details in no time. So let's just focus on what to expect from those brushes. This brush is called Big Grunge. And this is the pencil color, nice to use for illustrative liners. We even got a watercolor brush here. This one is interesting and shows some slight deviation from the color we select. This is a procedural texture brush. This one is the strake brush. This is the rake brush and this is the trick. If you switch to smear tool, you will find two more brushes. I use them to emulate traditional look. Pretty interesting, right? Well, let's look into them with greater details. While I recreate this painting by Loika super quickly, I actually skipped many things of the original scene. Just made some rocks quickly and the dune. It is okay as long as I can talk about some brush works in 3D. All the models are pretty simple and so I will use automatic UV mapping for this project. Also from time to time I will speed up by 3 to 5 times so that I can publish this by tomorrow before the year ends. I am done with the UV mapping as soon as I land it in the edit tab. Let me assign some materials to them. 
The rocks are sharing a single texture map and a single material. The dune gets its personal texture map. You can create textures inside texture paint mode this way. This adds a texture slot in shader editor automatically. I switched to paint mode for reference inside image editor. Also, I split the image editor and unpinned this one so that it gets switched automatically when I switch between my meshes. I changed the viewport shading to flat, lightings are gone now, and set color to texture. I also have cavity selected and I am back to normal speed again. So sorry for scanning with my insane speeding. Here we go, let's get into painting right away. Not sure why I dare to say painting because I don't actually paint. I am not good at it. I just recreate paintings while depending on my texturing and observational skills. Yeah, it is your regular copycat stuff. And wow, I am not even ashamed. Let me show you how I shamelessly copy this dangerously beautiful scene in 3D. I don't know, the colors like I use as in their painting is too dangerous for my heart. I love those. Trust me, I am morally high when I compare myself with those AI thingies. They pretend they don't even know whose paintings they snatched randomly. On the other side, this innocent guy innocently remakes 3D versions of his favorite paintings. Pretty harmless hobby, right? I just tried to mask out the cavities since I prefer it over viewport cavities from the overlay setting. I switched to the dark mode since people hate light mode. No idea why, light mode is actually pretty good for eyes since the white don't bleed into the black. To sample a color, you can hit S and hover around to target a certain color and release to pick one. I am going to copy the hex code for background. Deselected the cavity since I won't need it while painting. I will uncheck the outlines as well. These things are almost like a ritual. They help me to get into the mood of painting somehow. So it might not work for you. I will start texturing my scene now. I started with painting over the sharp edges of the dune. I want to give it such a look as if it is isolated in the space. You probably get the idea already. So this is what the pastel color brush do. It got high visual effect. I usually use pressure sensitivity for brush size and strength but I often turn them off since sometimes my viewport lags a lot probably because of my hardware. I call this brush blocky chalky. It is more denser than the previous but it got subtle bristle effect as well. I like to use it with lower opacity and add details with it but I often use this for blocking out colors too. And here is the big grunge. I like this one too. If I make strokes with subtle pressure it will give this sort of details. Pretty useful. In fact, these are my primary texture brushes. I think you actually don't need a huge set of texture brushes. I also like to turn off the pressure sensitivity for brush opacity from time to time. And with decreased opacity, the brush will deliver interesting details by layering strokes over one another. This is the flat marker. I usually use this to get more graphical result rather than for illustrative texturing. And this is my airbrush. Nope, it is not made with airbrush mode at stroke setting. I am actually utilizing the accumulate option under advanced tab. It is more like a spray paint this way. If you stay over a place for too long, color will pile up just like what a spray canister would do. So you need to avoid staying at one place for too long if you want to get a nice spray effect. Also, you have to use this brush with very low opacity. It will make the color accumulation slow.
This is where you can find accumulate option. You get the general idea behind airbrush. Up next, I will focus on blocking out main colors in the scene. Airbrush will be too slow for that process. Also, this one is another texture brush, but without bristle effect. It is useful for getting brush marks while texturing. I often use two smear brushes for brush working purpose. This is almost like a mixer brush from Photoshop, or I think blender brush will be the appropriate term. Not this blender. I mean a blender brush that blends neighboring colors by dragging them around if you are familiar with painting inside 2d software you probably get what i mean i often play around with a spacing option to get different kinds of brush marks very low spacing will result in uniform and smooth brush marks while higher spacing gives a dry brush behavior Same goes for those smear brushes. I would switch to higher spacing to get a impressed look. Like this, the brushes looks very dry now. So the possibilities of what you can do with this brush set is very high. You can customize them according to what kind of brush behavior you may need. Let's speed up since I have demonstrated the useful setting to control brush behavior. As you can see, I often sample color from the reference and pick colors to paint on our 3D object. I am just blocking out the main colors now. This artwork is done with a high pastel look. I mean it is quite pastel in regards of brush marking and even for the color scheme too. So I will stick to the pastel color and blocky chalky brush for the most part. Also, you can isolate and viewport by hitting shift plus spacebar and an object to its local view by hitting backslash, pretty useful. Also, working on a single viewport can decrease lags in the viewport. To block out rock colors, I selected the flat marker brush. I am using higher pressure to define areas for respective colors. I also use the pencil color brush a lot to make organic strokes. Did you notice those warm colors in between light and shadow? You probably noticed such things in a Spider-Verse movie. It is called light fall off. But yeah, artists often make it very stronger. And so regular people like me can appreciate it much easier. When I need a lot of brush marks, I like to switch to track, rack and strike brush and play around with them. Like I said, I am blocking out main colors with blocky chalky. 
I think I have studied most of the important things regarding my brush working process. Now that I look back, I can realize how much of an important discovery it was for me when I first managed to create dual texture brushes in Blender. This artwork took me around 2 hours to finish. Yeah, I agree, it is not like the original painting. I skipped lots of things. But I didn't have to step outside of Blender for a single time. It was really unthinkable in the past. I used to export my texture maps to Clip Studio Paint so that I can get some brushworks done for making illustrative scenes. Did I ever tell you that I make illustrative 3D backgrounds for animation? Before those brushes come into existence, I used to spend hours while blindly painting my texture maps in 2D softwares. A scene would take up to 30 to 40 hours. That wasn't the only weakness of my workflow. I had to use large UV islands to keep things recognizable inside painting software. I deemed those lacking for gamer because they would waste a lot of texture space, sometimes up to 35%. But things are very different now. I can do all the works directly inside Blender and I don't face trouble with aligning brush marks direction. Those horrible days of painting textures back and forth in painting software and Blender texture paint are long gone. I don't miss those old days at all. So perhaps you can imagine why these brushes are very special to me. Maybe you find them useful too. Let me know however you want to. I have already seen some examples of what people have been doing with them. I also got a discord server so you can share your thinkings directly to me over there. I am also looking forward to see what you paint with my free brush packs. They shouldn't be neglected just because they are free. Blender is free too, but we all know how fun it is. I also have a particle brush which helps me to sprinkle particles like the reference. I think I am pretty much done with what I wanted to share with this video. Maybe in future, I will completely reconstruct one of Loika's beautiful painting. I couldn't give it my all in this one. And let me know in the comment section if you have any questions or if you want to see certain brush behavior in Blender. I can work on that but cannot promise result since brush options in 3D is very limited. But I am already happy that I could make an illustrative scene completely in Blender. So that is it. Hoping to see you in the next year as well. Thanks for staying with me. You can follow in Insta or Twitter for fastest updates. Goodbye and take care.